I finally swam with the world's largest fish, the whale shark, and it was an absolutely amazing experience that I'll never forget about. I even pressed him with gang signs, but that's only because the whale shark is an extremely peaceful creature. I swam with two different whale sharks and one of them was 30 feet long, which is bigger than a great white. Swimming with an animal of this size can always be dangerous. But lucky for me, the whale shark feeds exclusively off of plankton, so I was safe to swim right up to him and experience this encounter firsthand. On my journey to swim with these whale sharks, I encountered many amazing animals in the wild. We played with a community of seals from a seal colony. I pulled a Steve Irwin and swam with thousands of rays, and I recorded all of my adventures so I can bring you guys with me and we can relive the experience crossing this off my bucket list, snorkeling with whale sharks. Oh, we have a party here. So let's head out to sea to make my dream come true. Let's swim with the biggest fish on earth, the largest shark on earth, the whale shark. So I booked a beautiful penthouse in La Paz, Mexico, and the weather was perfect to go out and hunt for whale sharks. But before I could even get there, I had to leave my house in California, and that meant it was time to fly on a plane. I don't know why planes make me so paranoid, but whenever I'm about to get on a flight, YouTube just seems to recommend me a bunch of plane crash videos, and then it makes my anxiety even worse. But everything was of course fine, and we made our trip to Cabo San Lucas, and then took the two hour car drive through rural Mexico to La Paz. We stayed at this penthouse and the views were absolutely amazing. You could see the whole city of La Paz and you can tell that it's developing over time and it's becoming a much bigger tourist spot and hopefully we can keep it clean. The good thing is that there was actually people cleaning everywhere and I really noticed how different that was from Los Angeles where you have homeless people just like throwing feces in the street. And I'm not kidding, I live in Los Angeles, this does happen. So the day was young, we went and got some lunch. This pokey was honestly insane, it was like $5 for an entire fish. And with a good meal in my stomach, it was time to get on the boat and pursue our first adventure. Once we got on the water, we began heading out to sea as fast as we could, on our way to visit the Espiritu Island. Now I kinda just said that we parted, it's called Isla Espiritu, Island of the Spirits, and this is one of the most biodiverse places in all of Mexico. It's just off the coast of La Paz, and there are whale sharks here, there's a colony of 600 sea lions, there's dolphins, manta rays, stingrays, sea snakes, I mean literally anything you could think of, it lives here. And some insane stuff has honestly taken place here, so on our drive, we made sure to keep our eyes out for any wildlife that may be along the way, and that's when we saw this rock right here, and we heard some sounds coming from it. So we knew there was gonna be at least a small sea lion colony. There were a few big males on the rock and these are the guys that we actually do not wanna mess with. They have been known to hurt people and they can be a bit aggressive, especially when they're with their females. So we decided to get in the water over with these juveniles that had actually formed up and were all sleeping together. Sea lions group up into these circles for protection, warmth, but mostly as a social activity and that's something I noticed swimming with them was that they're extremely social animals and no giant predator on land would ever play with a human but it's so crazy because when I got in the water it almost felt like they were a dog playing with me. The water was like 64 degrees Fahrenheit and if you know me I'm an absolute baby about water temperature so that was tough. But I got in and I was kindly greeted by this super cute sea lion. Look at his face guys, he's just absolutely adorable. You can see he checks us out and then swims right back into his pod. All of the sea lions were adorable and since we were behind them I was kind of just hoping that none of them would take a shit on me. He just shit and all the fish are eating it. <laughs> As I swam closer, the juveniles seemed kind of tired. I think they were just taking their afternoon nap. 
They were all huddled up for warmth, but then some of them started swimming around and I actually caught these two starting to play, so I started swimming over there to see if maybe I could interact with them. The seals in the water were all juveniles, so they were super playful and this one right here jumps out of the water. They're all playing, they're all having fun, and as I work my way into their little pod, they start to accept me a bit more, I'm able to get close, and it's kind of like I'm a cameraman in the hood filming an interview. They don't see me as a threat, but they know I'm not from here, and so that makes them kind of interested in me. And you can see that this little tiny seal right here was kind of sleeping, but he was also super curious and checking out the GoPro and who I was swimming. But then there were these giant seals over here, and this is when I became kind of nervous because these seals, even though they're just playing, could easily take me down in one bite. I was a D1 swimmer in college and I actually had some pretty fast times, but even I was no match for a sea lion. Sea lions are kind of like giant pit bulls. If they were able to swim fast as hell, 30 knots, and still kept the same insane bite force. So safe to say these guys are pretty dangerous, but I felt comfortable, so I kept swimming in. At this point, we were in really shallow water, and there was beautiful corals under us. It almost looked like Australia. It's a shame you can't see it in the GoPro footage from here, but guys, there was an immaculate coral reef, and I was swimming with the giant sea lions. Look at this guy. He's so cute. But at this point, a bunch of other boats had pulled up, and if you know me, you know I really don't like swimming with a bunch of tourists, so we headed back to our boat, and that's when we saw these two cute, adorable sea lions just swimming together. It was almost like they were a couple, and then I was covered in sea lion poop, and it was time to get out. As we got back to the boat, I realized that my sea lion friend had followed me back and we said a farewell to him. He was barking goodbyes at me and these guys really are just cute giant pit bulls. Oh, we have a party here. On the boat ride back to shore, we witnessed the mobile arrays jump out of the water impressively across the surface of the ocean, only to slap back in with a thud. You see, this was symbolic of our day. I had just swam with giant mammals in the wild for the first time, but this was not what I was here for. I came with the sole intention of finding the world's largest fish. So for day two, the objective was clear. Find the whale shark and become the goat, or just be another dude that took a picture in front of the La Paz sign. I woke up the next morning, took a look at the beautiful view, and used the hot tub out on the penthouse. We were scheduled to go out on the boat to hunt for whale sharks in about three hours, so we took this opportunity to go down and see some of the local sites and get some food. The local sites were kind of strange sculptures to say the least. There's this sailor boy, Jesus with a shell, I'm not exactly sure what that's about. Uh, this humpback whale one was the kind of only normal one. And then right there, we have the beautiful whale shark. Wait, actually, that's a 20-foot pigeon. Mexico, y'all. I'm the big G. I got my assistant here. He's chilling with me. And today, I'm going to bring you the best snorkeling video on YouTube. And on that note, we drove down to the marina, got on our boat, and started heading out to sea, where we saw all these mega yachts. And guys, one day, I just want a little boat to call mine. So we headed out on the open ocean in our little dinghy. It was really beautiful. There were these giant canyon walls on all sides of us, and we were just patrolling this entire bay to see if we could find a whale shark in here. This is the spot they come to because the water stays protected, calm, and warm, and because they have protection in the shallow bay from their main predators, which are great white sharks and orcas. We patrolled back and forth on this bay, trying to look for whale sharks for about 30 minutes, and then an hour, to no avail and then when it was about to be an hour and a half we turned the corner and started driving up here and all at once we see these dolphins jumping up out of the water there's a pod of dolphins coming directly at us and we look to the left and there is a 30 foot whale shark right in the same view after not seeing anything for almost an hour and a half we see two amazing animals at once so we had to pick one and obviously we chose the whale shark so we pulled up alongside the whale shark and he was swimming alongside us and he actually didn't look like he was swimming that fast you know 
Whale sharks can only swim about 3 miles per hour, that's because they migrate for such a long way, and Michael Phelps swims about 6 miles per hour. Now I'm no Michael Phelps, but I did have some pretty good times, so my goal was to keep up with the whale shark good enough that I could get some amazing videos of his face, his eye, and really interact with him as much as I could. So I climbed up on the side of the boat, turned on my GoPro, and jumped in the water swimming as fast as I could to get right up with the whale shark so he didn't leave me behind. I was really grateful for my swimming background because when you're in the open ocean and there's currents, it does get a lot harder to swim fast. And we were in deep water. I mean, certain people get nervous when the water's this deep. There's actually no reason to. There's honestly a less chance of you seeing something, but we were right on the whale shark, so I kept swimming with him and he dove down a little deeper. I think I may have scared him because I came up so fast. But he was beginning to rise in the water and I was swimming right above a whale shark. That's something not many people can say. And it's sad, but animals like this, they are going extinct in our generation and I wanna take advantage of this. And I think you could tell how happy I was when I was swimming with him. This truly was a dream come true and this animal is just so majestic. When you're up close swimming with it, it puts it into perspective how small you are compared to certain other animals. And I was keeping up with the whale shark at this point. He wasn't as fast as I thought. Some of the other people that were trying to swim with whale sharks told me that they couldn't keep up and I think y'all need to just go back to swim lessons. But I wasn't the only one trying to keep up with the whale shark. These fish underneath him are called pilot fish. They swim with whale sharks for miles and travel all across the earth with them, keeping them clean from parasites and in return getting protection from the whale shark. And so as the whale shark grew more comfortable with me swimming along him, he came up to the surface and I was able to get some really beautiful shots of his body, his face, and even his eyes where you can see right here. They're very small, they're very tiny compared to his body, but those eyes give him a 180 degree view on either side, allowing him to be vigilant of predators coming from afar. The patterns on the whale shark are nothing short of majestic. He has a gray background with white spots and it's almost like a starry night. It's so beautiful and in person, it's even more amazing. This particular whale shark was about the size of an American school bus. And when you stand next to a school bus, you feel pretty small. This was a living animal. One strike from his tail could easily destroy me. So that was a concern, but I made sure to keep my distance at least three feet away from him. And he seemed to respect us as well. And at this point, I felt like the king of the ocean. So I couldn't stop myself. I just had to bang on the whale shark one time. At this point, I must have swam over a mile with this whale shark. We had been following him for such a long time that we actually ran into a second whale shark that was a little bit smaller. And these guys were peacefully coasting about the surface of the ocean, eating plankton and other microscopic organisms by sucking in as much water as possible and filter feeding out the good stuff. And remember how I said I hate sharing the water with tourists? Well, a few tourists had realized that we were swimming with whale sharks and they wanted to see themselves. No problem. I mean, if they're respectful to the whale shark, none of us own the ocean and we all deserve to experience the wonders. The problem came when this guy was not agile or fast enough to move out of the way, but he had swam directly in front of a 20 foot whale shark blocking his view and almost getting You eaten. see, these are the tourists I don't like. The people that get right up to a giant wild animal and don't respect it at all. They just want to get a photo for Instagram or look cool in front of their significant other, but they end up just looking like an idiot when they get caught on camera looking like they're harassing an already endangered animal that needs to eat, that needs to reproduce. And, and this is when we get into controversial territory because we all want to be able to use the wonderful beauties of the ocean and nature and no one deserves to regulate that and stop other people from using it. But the problem is that the whale shark population is already down 50% in the last 75 years and humans cannot continue to be dumb and irresponsible with nature or we're gonna lose these amazing animals forever. Almost 500 of these animals congregate off Mexico to breed and give birth, and especially when we're talking about breeding grounds, these animals do not need stupid tourists getting in their way and kicking them in the face. So what is the right thing to do about it? 
Well, the unfortunate truth is that there's no easy solution. Whale sharks endangerment has only been taken seriously since 2003, and before this there were literally fisheries dedicated to just killing whale sharks. But overfishing wasn't actually the problem that caused this decline. Neither were the stupid tourists, actually. You see, this problem was caused from gross negligence by governments all around the world. Recently, the Global Shark Movement Project tracked almost 350 whales and found out the actual cause of their deaths. They found out that in major shipping lanes that cargo vessels go through, 25% of the whale sharks, a fourth of them, were killed. Because whale sharks migrate across the world, that means that probably 25% of their population is being killed off every year, and we wonder why they can't grow back. Not to mention that the size of these shipping vessels takes up 92% of the area that whale sharks swim in. That means that if a shipping vessel and a whale shark share the same space, that whale shark has a 92% chance of dying and an 8% chance of not hitting the boat. This is why we often see whale sharks with gashed up backs and scrapes all over them. The whale shark has always been one of my favorite animals and this was really a dream come true to swim with one. In light of how endangered these guys are, it's really sad, but I was truly happy that I was able to meet my favorite creature in person. And with that, my La Paz vacation was a success. I said a farewell to my whale shark friend, and I hope you guys are happy that I got to experience one of my favorite things that I've ever done. And to finish off this episode, I wanted to read a little something that I made for my whale shark friend. Mr. Whale Shark, you are a legend. One day you'll be with your brothers up in heaven, but hopefully not by a cargo vessel. Swimming with you was very special.